Bill Hebson, Workout America TV. Coming to you from the beautiful powerhouse gym at Stewart, Florida. And we're gonna talk a little bit this morning about the biomechanics, the spinal biomechanics uh, of lifting, particularly as it relates to lower back injuries and the asymmetric loading patterns and unbalanced loading situations that we face in the real world. And this will also relate to all of you guys who are hitters, throwers, golfers who deal with rotational mechanics uh, in, your, in your sports and recreational activities. So, so when we talk about spinal mechanics, is that rotation happens in the thoracic spine. We've got, we've got facet joints that angle out on either side of the, you know, on the little transverse processes that meet that form a joint. So they angle out and they, they glide in this direction in a transverse plane up in the thoracic spine. As we get lower in the spine, <clears throat> these facet joints turn vertical, right? So the, so the lower back, the lumbar spine, flexes and extends great, it really is not too, uh, too efficient at rotation. We, we begin to transfer rotational torque down into the lumbar spine uh, and sacroiliac, which is really not designed to do that. So, meanwhile, we are all rotational animals. All our lifting follows what I would call the serape effect or PNF, these cross-body loading patterns. If we're gonna pick up our kids or pick up the groceries, where are we? Rotate from the ankle up to the hip. If we're going to throw, we throw shoulder to hip, cross body, all rotation. All the stuff that we can coach you to lift, like a deadlift in the gym, never happens in the real world. Why not? We were not designed to do that. All the nation, the orientation of the fibers of the body are transverse. We are rotational animals. Walking and running is rotational. We all, you know, we, we balance the body with contralateral rotation. We step right, the left side of the body goes forward, otherwise we would walk like this. Which most of your lifters do, that's a traditional gym walk. <laughs> so, how do we protect the lower back from injury? How do we pr prevent this translation of rotational torque down into the lower back to prevent injury? And also, how do we prove you know, produce more dynamic force, rotational torque for our hitters. And every hitter is rotational. If you look at, a, if you look at uh, the mechanics of a golf swing, baseball swing, throwing a punch, they're all very similar. And when you watch a good hitter work, they have a couple of things in common. And what we want to talk about tonight is what I call the essential pivot. So the secret for all of you hitters out there is what I call the essential pivot. And this is uh, essential for all of you guys who are doing real world lifting. And it, it involves merely lifting the trailing heel when we, when we pick up an object or when we rotate the head. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna shift where you guys get to see a little bit of this in action. So, one of the common things is when we watch any efficient hitter work, and it doesn't make any difference whether we're going to throw a punch, hit a baseball, hit a tennis stroke, hit a golf stroke, or lift efficiently where we're going to pick up the package, we're going to pick the groceries up, we're going to rotate to pick the kids up, and then what do we do? It's we reach to the angle, we bring right up to the hip. Cross body. The common denominator with all efficient hitters and rotational athletes is the essential pivot. And what do we mean by that? We merely pick up the trailing heel, 
So when we rotate, the ankle, knee, and hip are all aligned in the direction of the strike, or the direction of the lift, and that the shoulders and the hips move as a unit. The hips rotate under the shoulders, so we maintain lumbar alignment, right? We're not translating that torque down. And if you also want to produce a lot more rotational torque and force with your head, you bring the hips into it and the hips carry the most mass in the body. And that's how we really drive the train for uh, force, developing force production uh, in a strike. So we want to begin to incorporate this into our lifting and movement patterns so that it's in gram. It's in gram that we don't have to think about it. It's second nature with our movement.